This is the Red All Over Show with me, Joe Beardsall, Tracy Martin, Josh Atherton and Alan Smith. We are talking all about that one-all draw between Bristol Rovers and Barnsley. And we will be looking ahead to Barnsley vs Peterborough on Tuesday night. As always, hit like, subscribe. Let's get into it. Right then, gang. So after an absolute amazing start to the season, a 7-0 win over Port Vale on opening day. Um, I won't say a bump back down to earth, but it definitely was a, a much more difficult challenge away at Bristol. Um, Al, how were it? How did you enjoy your trip, mate? It was a great trip to Bristol. Uh, when you got there, you saw the uh, problems that they had with the ground, didn't you? It were, you know... It was a big if crane at one side of it. If, if I lived in one at Gardens, I'd have plenty of balls to play football with, I'll tell you that. Yeah, uh, what a start after seven minutes. Great ball in. Uh, Max Waters across box, straight to Nicky Cadden, and we thought where we were studying to go into the side netting. But what a strike to go uh, one nil up after seven minutes. And we thought, oh, we're on here. We're going in for a, you know, a, a kill. Did we? No, we didn't. Uh, after that goal... It were all uh, Bristol Rovers. Uh, they put the sword in us, and we were lucky, I think, to come away with a point at the end of the day. I will say this about their goal. Uh, looking at it uh, on replay this morning, it looked as though it should have been our corner. Uh, referee gave a push by Lapata, so get a free kick. Ball boy gave their keeper ball. He spun it, and as he passed it, straight away to Breckers, because our defence were nowhere, ball were, ball were moving. I mean, it's a slight point, but if referee's doing his job, that goal doesn't stand. Uh, yeah. And if it were a goal, and if it were a goal kick, it wasn't in his uh, six-yard area anyway to take a goal kick. So we didn't deserve uh, to come away with more more than a point, I don't think, because uh, they, they the crossbar as well. Uh, yeah. But uh, if we'd have got three points, it, it would have been a smashing grab. Definitely. I think, Josh, yeah, I can see Al's point from the goal, but when you look at the overall bigger picture, I think you'd be, yeah, Bristol Rovers probably deserve to win that game, if I'm honest. I think you're splitting airs and it's saying things like that. Um, it just sounds a bit, gonna... a bit sour grapes from us, but it's not really. Yeah, they were going to score at some point. Yeah. It's not like it were against run a play and they've gone and scored from nowhere. Um, they were anything. I think, uh, yeah, as Al said, very well taken goal. Uh, for me, though, it, I think it showed a little bit of. Max Waters missing that confidence because when he received the ball from Devante, he was almost in himself. And he's a fairly quick quick player as well that he could knock it to his right and then probably um, go across the keeper. Um, so I think it's... once I think once Waters gets up to speed, I think he'll be um, a very key part this season, but it's just going to take time for him to grow into, grow into that role. Um, but for the rest of Foreman, it's a far too big a gap between the midfield defence and front two. It isolated the front the front two, it made the midfield be nowhere, and then the defence took the brunt of everything because there was so much space in between. The amount of times John Marquis pick, picked the ball up in front of the back five and could just turn because it's in that awkward position of, if you step up as a defender, you leave a massive hole. And the amount of times in which we did that, um, the one where Aaron Collins went through one on one, of might have been Williams stepped into sort of midfield. Lepata, to go and think, think, oh, sorry, is you on about yeah, the Yeah, Williams yeah. stepped into um, press their midfield, which then left Lapata like one on one and facing the wrong way. Aaron Collins running at him, and it's it's simple things like that of knowing sort of not when to press or not, but just when to be um, to to squeeze the team because we got caught high and and they ran in between in behind two, three, four times. But it's not like it came at the cost of, oh, it's it, it's because we've pressed them high and they've just had to turn it around and it's just it's just gone long and it's more fortunate than anything else. It was sort of um, by design and the way in which we set up, it's just so many gaps between um, each sort of unit. And I think the, the shades are getting against uh, Port, Port Vale when you look at uh, Lapata's tackle. Um, back to the Port, the, the Port Vale game. Then foundations and cracks have, have, have been there from the start this season. But um, just because of the quality of Bristol Rovers this season, it'll be much more apparent of where uh, of where they lie, which I'd rather it happen now than happen in a month's time when we can't do anything about it. Um, there's still, obviously, Neil Collins still bedding in his philosophy and his, his style of play, which is all to be accounted for. And also, there's, what, six first-teamers out? Which I think puts in a really, really awkward position of it looks like we're light at at the minute, but then 
you go and sign someone and suddenly we've got nearly 18, 20 first teamers, um, of which not everyone can can play. So it's, I think we're in between a bit of a rock and a hard place at the minute. Yeah, I think it's just going to take time. I mean, when you get Phillips back next game, um, I think, so. sorry, after this game. Oh, no, it'll be next game, won't it? He's back for Peter. It should, it should so be, be, long as it should be okay for Peter. Yeah, so th- you think that's one more that strengthens strengthens the team slightly. And then, obviously, if we get Collins and McCarthy, suddenly, you, you know, new lad um, from France, that new defender, you suddenly look at it and thinking, okay, fair enough. You Like you say, Josh, you, you've got a bit of a, a team there. So I think we are going to have to be patient. Um, Tracy, obviously, from our point of view, lots of work to do. Uh, particularly defensively, um, for us to become more solid. But I have to say, I think Bristol Rovers, you, you're probably one of the best attacking sides from the looks of it on early early signs in this league. I mean, if if Marquis and Collins had had the shooting boots on, they could have maybe had an hat trick, both of them. <laughs> so it was very nervous yeah. when you look at those chances they've had. Yeah, I mean, I think we were aware of their quality. You know, Andy spoke about Marquis on, on the show on Wednesday and uh, you know, even to bring on sort of the likes of Sinclair as a, as a sub, um, I know he's a bit of a journeyman, but his quality is there for everyone to see, and he showed that because it's probably his first chance, and he tucked it in. Uh, and and if he'd have crossed it, which a lot were probably screaming for, I think Marcus was probably offside, um, but he didn't. And yeah, if Marcus had had any sort of vision and been able to see where the net was, thankfully he couldn't see where the net was. I think we'd have been three or four, maybe what four one down. Um, and I think that it'd have been interesting. I'm glad it didn't happen, but that would have been really interesting to see how we reacted because we were we were struggling. We were really struggling, and we, it was like a reversal of Port Vale the week before, where we struggled for 20 minutes and then we scored and came alive. This week we scored early, had maybe five or ten minutes after that goal, and then we sort of struggled for the rest of the game. Um, I mean, I've seen Waters and Cole have had a bit of criticism, but in fairness to them, they were feeding on scraps. You know, you look at Port Vale last week and the number of crosses we got into the box. I know, again, that's to do with our, what Josh has just said about us not playing in the in the correct way and, and our, our wing-backs just not getting into the spaces like they did against Port Vale. But they didn't have any real chances. The, the crosses that we did put in, you know, I look at them and I think Kokota's one. He nearly put it into the middle of Bristol City Town, I think. So we just we just didn't, we didn't really penetrate them at all. Um, and you know, I've I've seen Russell get quite a lot of criticism uh, for the role he played, but yeah, he, he didn't have as good a game as he has the previous two. And I do think we do miss Luca, uh, but I can't think you can put it down to one player because I, I, I've watched their goal back a few times, and other than Williams, nobody else is breaking the neck to get back. There's a lot sort of half-hearted trying, sauntering, but yeah, I thought it was pretty. To be honest. I was quite disappointed with our effort late on. Uh, I thought we looked jaded. We looked like we've been playing longer than three games. Now, hopefully that'll just be, like Josh said, bedding in, getting used to the philosophy, understanding Neil Collins' sort of tactical ways he want to play going forward. Because it was 1-1 I would have, yeah, I would have taken before the game, but I would certainly have taken at the end. I thought we were very, very fortunate. Fans yeah, yesterday a very Bristol good were, result. Fans yesterday at Bristol were really getting Russell some hammer, and I'll, I'll I'll say that for me, Jordan Williams was man at match. He put a shift in, and he 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 were he were guiding, he was shepherding, he was trying to get get on players' backs and tell them what to do. And he, he were all his last man. He were all cleaning up, uh, and I, I felt I felt for him. And I felt yesterday were one one dimensional. It were all as this get ball wide to either flanks and try and get the ball in, but delivery were poor. We never got, we never had chases, we never got the ball, correct balls in, the weighted balls, it never got past first man. Uh, and, and you know, we, it, it were, I'm not saying unfortunate, but it showed, showed that our side's uh, weakness yesterday. Uh, at Lepata, when he lost ball, he made that tattle, didn't he? Cracking tattle in penalty box. Uh, Russell loses it and he don't trap tra- back to try and win ball back and I think that's what you want to see as a Barnsley fan if you lose it try and get ball back Yeah maybe for something for him to work on Josh obviously quite a bit of criticism for our lads because uh, obviously it weren't the greatest performance but you've got to look at the opposition I think for me Bristol massive step up in terms of test for us at this time in the season and the way they play the, the quick counter attack I mean yeah for the goal like Tracy said definitely there was a few players who could have pressed a little bit more aggressively and on the front foot I think to win that back but it's a good goal 
It's a really good it turnaround. Is. Like the way they've shot up the pitch and Luke Thomas has played through Sinclair. Yeah. They've just ripped through us straight away, haven't they? I think it's sort of the thing of it happened in the first half when Lapata made that unbelievable challenge. The exact same thing happened of it came into someone in between the lines of the back four, uh, back, back five, sorry, midfield, and they've just turned it around corner. And the exact same thing happened again. And this time it fell to, to, to Sinclair and he's in. And it's sort of, it's having that news of like, it's happened once, it shouldn't happen again. But when you look at Aaron Collins last season, 18 goals, 17 goals, something like that. Giovanni Brown, 17 goals last season. Um, I don't think Giovanni Brown didn't uh, didn't start here because John Marcus were up front. But I think it's because when you look at uh, the way a 4 4 2 works as well, if the wingers can get high enough, it creates a 4 2 4 and against the back five. That's a very big problem because you're pinning the five back and then there's nothing going forward in terms of width. Um, and I think you saw that when they uh, every time they broke, um, you'd have Luke Thomas driving with the ball. And again, it's difficult. We know it as self from seeing him last season of when he drives with the ball, is he going to get a free kick or he's going to lay it off? He's going to move you further up f- further up the pitch. And I think that was very key yesterday of sort of the speed in which they broke up. Um, it was very one, two touch and look for gaps in behind. Because when you play a five and the wing packs go up high. The space is out. The space is out wide um, for you to go and attack there. And I think that's it. Just sort of showed, and ultimately in the goal of Sinclair, sort of didn't hug the touch line, but stayed in that gap in in that hall where sort of standard formation of back five. There's going to be a bit of a gap there, and he just sauntered into it, and it was nice and easy. And some of his experience and now they know where that space is. They know that if someone can get can get there up and flick it in, it's easy. And I think it's just the speed and pace of which they broke it that. Um, really caught us. It seems like it's shades of last season when we played Exeter every single time and they're just such a well-drilled side and know what they need to do that we struggle with it because they've not had the upheaval this summer that we have gone through of new manager losing key players. They've managed to keep hold of Collins, etc. who are key players for them. And it's just shades of the built off last season and the move forward um, as opposed to just sort of having to rebuild and restructure again. Um, so yeah, I think it also shows the testament to having that solid foundation to build from season on season as well. Yeah, let us know in the comments what you thought of the performance, Bristol and uh, Barnsley fans, Bristol Rovers and Barnsley fans. Uh, Tracy, you reckon Bristol top six contenders this season? I know it's early, but I, yeah, I, say, I, think they, I think they are. Yeah, I didn't have them as top six, but watching them yesterday, I thought they were very, very, uh, very good. And I think they'll cause a lot, of, a lot of teams problems, especially at home. You know, Luke Thomas, he, he were great. I thought he were their man at match, really. He, every time he got the ball, I was like, oh, here we go again. Um, because he was. And I think sometimes for us, he always lacked a bit of the final ball, but he didn't seem to yesterday for them. He um, he caused us some real problems. And, you know, you could see, obviously, he got a bit of a point to prove and he, and he wanted to do well, but he was a key man for them. And, yeah, I think they're definitely a, a top six material after what I've seen yesterday, yeah. I think he got man at match when they announced it at Bristol yesterday. I think he did, yeah, which uh, yeah looked deserving, to be fair. Uh, right, let's go and preview Barnsley versus Peterborough. As always, we'll get the young'uns on. Get your prediction in the comments for the prediction competition. Let's see what uh, little George and Isaac think to this one. It was a 1-1 draw against Bristol. Good job they cut it short, or else we would have been in big trouble. You are right there. They had ex-red Luke Thomas, who was running the show. Anyway, back at Oakwell against Peterborough. What do you think the score's going to be? I think it'll be 2 0 to Barnsley. I think it'll be 2 1 to Peterborough. If you think you're better than predicting than us, get it in the comments down below. You Reds! Right then, so that's the Youngun's prediction. It is Barnsley versus Peterborough Tuesday night. Oh, they don't get any easier, do they? Uh, Al, what, what are we reckoning to this one? I mean, Peterborough, obviously, a solid side in this league. Started really well. A win away at Reading 1-0 and then another 1-0 win uh, at home to Charlton. So they've got six out of six on the board. Tough test. It's a big test for us, isn't it? Um, yeah, the the Kipiano up front uh, scored for them, I think, yesterday. So uh, it's, it's not going to be easy. Um, let's have a think. They've got a decent lineup. Uh, play four two three one. Uh, yeah, let's make Oakwell a fortress, and I'm expecting uh, changes to lineup hopefully, uh, and, and mix it up a bit. 
Uh, but if we can do the same as we did when we played them last season, uh, we're, we're in with a chance. But we've, we've got to uh, not uh, put the uh, foot off the pedal, so to speak. We've got to be at it. And as I say, I think at Bristol, we run out of uh, speed, some at players. So we've, we've got to be on it, uh, mix it up a bit. And yeah, uh, let's see where it takes us. Uh, I think... Uh, Hopefully, we can win 3-2. 3-2? He's gone straight in with prediction. Fair enough. Uh, Josh, what do you reckon to this one? I thought I thought I was going to pinch your tactics corner and get his board out there when he started talking about formations. But, well, no, he's, he's, he's left it to you. So, <laughs> where do you see it tactically playing out? Um, if it's same as last season, it's when Jack Taylor ran the game against us and he just picked up the ball in between the lines, uh, very nicely linked everything together. And on the basis of the Bristol Rovers game, um, that seems like a weakness um, in the way in which we set up anyway. There seems to be such... I think that my main concern at the minute for us is the large gaps that appear in between each sort of unit. The defence somehow seems to push up fairly high and leave space behind, but it's nowhere near the midfield. There's nowhere near the front two. There's no. It's not like by pushing everyone up, you push the whole team forward. It just seems to be still segmented um, as you move further up, which... Is strange, and I don't understand how that's happened. Um, but it's something that needs addressing. Otherwise, we are going to get picked apart quite easily against sort of um, the better sides in the league, such as Peterborough. I think uh, Jack Taylor's gone to Ipswich now. Anyway, so they'll be reinvesting that that, that money into the side this season um, to build on last season. It'll be interesting to see sort of how how that plays out of whoever plays in the hole. Um, is able to link up li- link up the play because they've not really been... I think P- people are normally like a high score inside against you. You look at Johnson Clark Harris, all them seasons of scoring 25 to 30 in this league. And um, I think them two, that them two one nils could suggest a little bit of a shift in the way in which they are playing um, to be a little bit more solid defensively. I mean, when you look back to play a final, uh, semi-final, sorry, of shipping five, four... I can't remember. I just remember he got mental. Just thinking to it, though, of like they're not really a side that defends. It's more a side that goes out and attacks you, um, and it'll beat it'll beat you by by outscoring you than uh, winning one 0 But it seems like there's been a, a switch this season to sort of showing that defensive um, solidity. So I'm assuming there's been some refinements within the way they set up to sort of tweak maybe the two that sit um, behind the front sort of four in that uh, three one angle, just sit a touch deeper. And provide a little, a little bit extra protection um, is what I'd imagine is sort of their approach. And I imagine it'll be the same on Tuesday, especially away from home, that you probably want them to sit a little bit deeper just to just to have that extra coverage in front of the back four. Yeah, they're certainly looking a little bit more solid. I think Reading were a bit unlucky on opening day not to get something against them, to be honest. I thought they, they played particularly uh, decent and had quite a few decent chances. But uh, yeah, Tracy... Uh... No, no doubt, another really tough test for us at the start of the season, particularly as we're bedding in. Yeah, it's incredibly tough, especially after sort of uh, yesterday where we were not as probably uh, well gelled as we'd like it to be. I think, I think we're we're lacking a bit of a leader um, at the minute. Obviously, we we lost Madsen. I think most of us could see that Luca was was probably the leader going forwards from the midfield point of view. When we don't seem to have that, I know. Um, you know, Williams and Kitchen have sort of worn the band themselves so far this year, but neither of them seem to be vocal and, and taking charge of that, that back three. Casper's obviously very inexperienced at this level, although I think he's done reasonably well, very well actually, to be fair to him. Um, but I think we're really we're really lacking some real leadership on the pitch and maybe it's time for, for Kane to, to stand up and be counted in terms of the leadership role. Um, because he's he's playing no issues, but I think we do need somebody to sort of take charge while we get our, our feet sorted in terms of who's going to. I know Kitchen is the captain, but he doesn't seem to be very vocal um, at all, and, and sort of sorting out that defence and that gap that that Josh has talked about. Yeah, I fear for us a bit. If I'm being honest, I think I get confused because there's Mason Clark and Clark Harris, um, and and there's. The Mason Clark, when I saw the highlights against Charlton, he scored, but then I think he got injured. But from what I can see, I think he might be back. And he's one of the wingers that, that caused us some problems um, when we played him at the end of the season. And I think he's a bit of a threat. Um, and obviously Clark Harris, well, you know, these goals tally don't lie, do they? He's, he's successful continuously at this level. So it'll be a real test for us. And yeah, I'm, um, 
I'm a little bit a bit worried. They did get a lot of bookings yesterday, Peterborough. I noticed that game against Charlton. There were loads of bookings, including the manager. So that'll be fun because Collins likes a bit of a tussle, doesn't he? So I think that'll be could be quite entertaining on the sidelines if it gets a bit uh, a bit feisty. But we'll see. Yeah, I, I, it's going to be tough. I think Peterborough will be up there this year. So yeah, tough, tough game. What are you reckoning for your prediction then, Tracy? Oh, I'm going to do a bit of a Josh. I think we're going to lose actually. Um, oh, oh. You will get some comments. There's, people I, I are not happy with you. I mean, Josh yeah. has got, got to talk about that in a minute. <laughs> We're taking over. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm tilting Boo. like this. Um, yeah. I, you know, I realize don't... we're supposed to be the happy clapper. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, I just don't, I, I don't think, I don't think we can, I don't think we'll stop them scoring. And I, and from, I think we're going to lose 2-1. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, I will say that. I hope I'm completely wrong. And I, I'm not there because I'll be in London, so I'll be trying to sort of... But yeah, I, I hope I'm completely wrong. And I come out of the theatre extremely happy to see that we've we've won and, I will, and everyone can comment and say, what does she know? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah you could be singing We Are Top at League on Tuesday. Josh. I'll also be happy with that, Alan. <laughs> Alan's already gone, so I'm coming back to you, Josh, because Alan's gone for his 3-2 win to Barnsley. Happy clapper. Anyway, <laughs> um, Josh, what, what are you reckoning? Um, and and how are you feeling about you know you, you got some you got a fair bit of stick for 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 you know not being too excited about that seven 0 But in fairness to you, I think it showed after the Bristol Rovers <laughs> game that you know you were right to have a, a level of you know bring us all down to earth, keep us as feet firmly on the ground because no, it clearly is. I'll be expecting the apologies from everyone that was saying stuff after or like yeah look we've had seven shots and all seven have gone in like that's not going to happen. Every single week, is it? You know, sorry for staying grounded and not yeah. and not buying into the hype immediately after one game this season that we're going to walk, we're going to walk the league. Um, so yeah, I'll be expecting an apology in the comments, everybody that had something to say. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. just widen them up. <laughs> yeah, I'll be expecting it. Um, no, I agree with Tracy. I think it's going to be a very difficult game. Um, just because when you look at the way Peterborough operates as a club as well, it's not mass turnover every single season. There's a reason why they're continually, if they're not in the championship, um, always up there in League One. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll be a difficult one. And I'm going to go with 2 Nil Peterborough. <clears throat> oh dear. I was gonna go for a win, but then you two are, two are swaying me. I'm, what was happening? I'm getting swayed. This is not normal. I'm just go for no. a draw then. If you're gonna go for a win, you've been swayed. Yeah, I mean I did I bummed an hard of it. I, you know what? I, we're at home, which I do think gives us quite a bit of an advantage. Uh I think Collins will be well, it's not a long, it's not a quick turnaround, but I think Collins will be keen to try and you know try and point out some of the ways we we sort of flaws we've made against Bristol Rovers. So, oh, I'm going to go for a sneaky two one win, but I think it'll be very tight. Sneaky two one win to Barnsley. I will say this I about Collins. Get Phillips in. Sorry, Alan, go on. Sorry, I, I will say this about Collins yesterday. It was very animated on that touchline in the second half. I've never seen anybody, you know for a long time show show his anger on, on a touchline and uh, frustration so there'll be, there'll be words and uh, as I said you've got confidence oh, in him I think he's going to pull oh, us together but it's just going to take time he'll be back it should be that back reminds, it reminds me that of um, when we were winning 7-0 against Port, Port, Port Vale he absolutely I'm a John Russell for some he because obviously I sit just behind him he will batter him players at 7-0 up so he's got he's got the what standards. you want to see in a sense. Yeah, he's got, you, you don't want he's got the high standards, standards. That, that that you want to see, regardless of results. So no doubt after yesterday's performance, people will have been getting battered. Yeah, I think I think that it's gonna take a bit of time. Like I said, we're gonna to have to be patient. I think it may even take to 10, 15 games before we start seeing the best of this team, but like yeah, I think he's definitely qu- seems to be quick and on them to to point out errors and, and try and rectify things. So yeah, I go for a two one win. Up, I think it'll be we've got 10, 15 games. That's the thing. You've got to do it now. You've got to get in. You've got to get your points True. on board, Joe. I think after ten games, we've got to have at least fifteen. I didn't realise, but I worked out yesterday. After ten games last season, I thought we'd had a bit of a shaky start last season, but we actually had seventeen points um, after 10, 10 league games, which I thought was quite. Quite surprising to me. I think it was actually the games after that we started to dip a little bit. You know, like the defeat against Morecambe, Exeter 
you know, those sort of games. Wickham, obviously, we lost 3-0 at home. So, yeah, I think we've got to be aiming for around 15 points, I think, after 10 games. I think that'd well, be a, a good challenge. Positives, we're still us. unbeaten. There you go, positives, we're we still are, unbeaten. We are, and I do think we'll play better at home. I think Phillips will boost us massively to have Phillips back. Um, I think we've really missed him, so it's good to have Adam Phillips back in, in, in contention. Does so, he go back I'm going to go for a 2-1. Does yeah, it come back in? Where it puts him. Is he gonna Ooh. like drop drop Russell and stick Kane back in there and, and give Phillips that midfield? I think I don't think he can drop styles because you know I, think, I, I feel sorry for Russell that if that ball. happens because I think Russell played really well in first two in against Vale and I thought he played really well. Obviously he played decent in Cup as well. But I think after his game on Saturday, ah, it's, you know, it's difficult, isn't it? You have one bad game, you, sometimes that can happen, a manager can make the change. It's really down to Collins, but I, Phillips' overall performances last season, I think, warrants him a, a place in the and team. Phillips has got goals in him. So, we'll see. We'll see. But I, I personally think Phillips should come back in. I'd probably bring I'm Phillips back sure in. I'm not sure with the way he sets up, though, now, because Kane and Phillips sit a little... Uh, Kane and Russell sit deeper and more central, as opposed to last season when Phillips basically played as a right winger. Um, he played like half right, right winger, half cent- centre midfielder. So, it's a different role to play this season. And I think when you look at pre-season, him and Barry Cotter, um, especially against the whole game, it seems like there's teething issues of Phillips slot, slot into this new hole where he's got to sit a touch deeper. So it depend, I think it depends if Collins trusts him to carry out what Collins expects of him, of Phillips. Could you swap Styles and Phillips in terms of their roles? Mm, no? No. Not and, and, and yeah, I'm not. I'm not dropping Obi Kane because he's literally the. No, no he's way. our most important player in this mm. style. Yeah, Styles no, had I a agree. good game yesterday. I kept pushing Styles. I enjoyed Styles watching Styles yesterday. Interesting. Let us know what you think to the. That was a. We didn't expect all that conversation, but let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, do you reckon uh, Phillips comes back in? What do you think? Who's your Who's your midfield for for the game against Peterborough? Right, gang, have a great week. We will see you later in the week. Our next show will be, I think, Instant Reaction on Tuesday night outside. Uh, if not, you'll see us on Wednesday. So we'll be doing a show either Instant Reaction or Wednesday. I don't know if we decided yet. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm looking to you guys to see if anyone remembers, but nobody seems to. So we'll figure it out. You'll see us Tuesday or Wednesday this week. At least there's not like in. three or four sheets telling us when we're doing shows or nowadays. That we're I know. It's not, it's not like we're really organised this season <laughs> and we've got like Tom writing his sheets telling us every show and I've still can't remember. We've got an app. There's, there's exactly. an app that we're we using as well. Everything. We've got an app we're using. We've got a schedule and I still can't remember. So it's on me. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Sorry. <laughs> uh, have a great week, guys. We'll catch you later in the week. You Reds. Yeah.